Um, I'm not going to be editing this video. I'm just going to chat to the camera whilst I'm driving to Warrnambool to adjudicate. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just going to happen. Um, just passing a really, really slow truck. Like I, those of you who drive, do you ever feel really sorry for trucks that just cannot make it up a really, really gradual incline? It's like, it's like that little train can't do it. They can, they think they can. That's what I was feeling for this truck back there. But you know, who cares? Um, that's not what today's video is about. So today I'm gonna have a chat about music choices for comp performance versus end of year performance or like your big recital dance school concert performances. Um, so from an adjudicator's perspective, more unique your competition routine is, the better. I personally try really, really hard to not put too much stock in the choreography and the choices of the teacher. However, that needs to be taken into account in the same way that if you're an amazing teacher and you are able to get any student to dance brilliantly because your technical knowledge is incredible and your ways of teaching that technical knowledge are, are amazing, then that's an advantage that that student has. So it's the same as if you are an amazing choreographer and pick really, really interesting ideas that makes your dancers stand out in a section. It's exactly the same, exactly the same. So I'm not going to be as hard on myself anymore with those sorts of things where if I think, if I think the choreographer teacher has phoned it in as far as the chore goes, then, uh, uh, you know, and it's a bit boring and it's a boring song choice, then that's going to affect my markings. Um, I'm going to let it affect my markings more. It's not going to stop that person from winning. But in the same way that if, you, if you're a teacher who just doesn't focus on correct alignment of the body and say dance practices, that's going to affect, in my mind, that's going to affect your students' technical scores. If you're a teacher who just does whatever songs are on um, the, like what are current billboard charts and as the old people would we used to call them, all those like a parade. Um, yeah, if you're just doing a popular song, I'm going to be bored of that song. Um, <clears throat> great show me. Yeah, don't do it. Just don't do it. Be interesting. Be unique. Be as unique as you possibly can. We live in a postmodern age. Nothing is unique. I get it. But just a little bit extra effort. Something I've seen at other with um, a lot of schools, or I, 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 don't, I didn't so much notice this as an adjudicator because as an adjudicator you tend not to see the same routines or dances over and over again. But I noticed this as a teacher, and as a teacher I was like, oh, why are they doing the same routine again? Um, but it's a bloody clever idea. So what happens is um, a teacher, this is really good for the schools that have been around for a, a very long time, they basically have their own repertoire of comp dances. And um, so as an example, um, I adjudicated in Warrigal and I saw Heidi Freeman do this amazing jazz routine that was like a freaky circus clown thing and it didn't scare the crap out of me, so yay. And Heidi's an amazing dancer. It was her jazz championship, I think. And that had been a routine that um, another dancer had done. Um, and they had just given the Cory and the costume pretty much to Heidi. I think it had been, um, modified for Heidi to suit her specific style and, and strengths and whatever. Um, and I think it's now been passed now that Heidi's moved on and is she's up to the Australian Ballet School now. Um, I think it's been passed down to someone else. It's a great routine. Why not pass it down? And I think there's the reason I think that's a great idea, there's two reasons why. One is that it means that that routine doesn't tie it's a great routine, but it means that it's um, the studio owner and the, the teacher doesn't have to choreograph her 400 jazz solo when she's already got a great piece there. 
The second reason that's good is that that kind of record popping happens a lot in our dance industry. Um, I mean, just look at like in the classical world, you use the same variation over and over again. It's happening in the musical world. You pay someone to do the cori and you use that cori the same with different groups of dancers as you change the cast or, you know, you might do it again. A company might do the same ballet, you know, four years down the track or whatever. Um, there's got to be, if you're going to do this though, please give the, the new artist, the new dancer, their own individual input into it. So don't make it exactly the same. Um, but yeah, I think it is a really good option for comp routines, especially those comp routines that, that are proven to be winners. Yes, it gets a bit boring for the other people in the audience who see the same, you know, you, you go to the same comps, it's the same other school, you see the same thing over and over again. But there is still a lot of validity in doing that, especially from an adjudicator's point of view. I think it's a great idea. Um, but if you're wanting to not do that and you're wanting to get new ideas, please make sure they have our new ideas. Um, and I get, I, look, I get it. Greatest Showman came out and it's, I still haven't seen it because I want to wait for it to be not done to death at home so that then I can just watch it fresh. But it came out, we all loved it, everyone loved the music, everyone felt really connected to it. When you're inspired by something as an artist, you want to then create for that. My tip, please save it for your concert, okay? Because then it's not, the people that are at the concert are generally people who are not dance goers. They're the families and friends of the dancers in your school, not other dance parents who have also seen that routine a million times or that song done a million times this year. Um, the only exception to that with dance concerts and recitals is the techies. Uh, one of my favorite things to do when I go into a theater for a dance concert is to ask the techies, I guess, what's the song this year that makes you want to kill yourself? And um, they always laugh and it's always the, like, you, you can tell which songs it's gonna be. Um, but they're, they're cool, that's their job. They're fine to see the same thing over and over and especially the lighting technicians, it helps them actually. They found because I've found a lot of them have this feedback where they're like, well, I've done this, I've lit this so many times that I can just use the same lighting and suggest that to the dance teacher. And they're like, oh yeah, that's great. And they're like, yep, cool, done, same lighting plan done. Um, so it works for that. And you know, the grandmas and granddads and aunties and uncles and friends and that who don't go to console looking around have probably seen The Greatest Showman and then they're like, wow, that was an amazing interpretation of it. But to be honest, from an adjudicator's point of view, um, there's only so many times I can see that, what's that ballad that everyone, never, never, never enough, that one. There's only so many times I can see that and no one's bringing anything particularly new to it. You know, no one's doing a waltz tap to it or whatever. Well, I'm saying no, no one that I've seen, everyone's doing all lyrical to it and it's, <sighs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Don't do it though. Give yourself as a dancer, a choreographer, give the kids more originality than that. And I know that's a really harsh thing to say to teachers, but I get how hard your job is. I do, and you know, those of you who have, who have had me adjudicate teachers, you know I am your biggest advocate. I get how hard your job is. You do not just turn up to class and pull a routine out of your butt. Okay, you think about it all the time, I get that. But here's some tips that I have for how I come up with lots of different routines and lots of different ideas that are different. Number one, if a song is popular, don't do it. If it is currently popular, don't do it. That leads on to number one, B. That doesn't mean you will never choreograph to that piece. It just means at the moment, no, don't do it. Um, leading into the next point, point number two. Keep a either a journal, a notebook, or in my case, a spreadsheet um, of potential routines. I actually have a, on my personal YouTube channel, not on my dance channel, 
I have a playlist called Potential Routines. And anytime I think of a song or hear a song that I think is really cool and would make a great routine, even if it's a really popular one, like a current popular song, I will find it on YouTube and save it to the Potential Routines folder. And then when I need a routine and I can't think of something, I just go, well, where's my Potential Routines folder? There it is, done. Pausing. Just pull it over to the side of the road because my neck is starting to twinge out. So I thought, mm, let's just have a sit, let's just have a sit. Um, and then I can actually talk to you. Yeah, so keep track of all the routines you have. Sometimes when you have an idea for a routine in that moment, it feels, sounds like a great idea, and then the next day you think, oh, that's an awful routine. That's an awful idea. It's not necessarily an awful idea, it's just that that moment where you had that creative vision has passed, it will probably come back again or something. You'll be, you know, you'll be asked to do a routine that you're like, oh, what do I do? And then you think of that idea and you can develop it in a different way. Yeah, keep an idea scrapbook, basically. Um, point number three, tip number three, Shazam. Shazam, get on the Shazam. You hear a song, you really like it, Shazam it. If you don't, even if you do know what it is, Shazam it because it will save a playlist in there for you and all those songs that you thought were that's um, Now, it, I feel dodgy doing this, but I do this at comps all the time, even when I wasn't adjudicating and just there as a teacher. If you hear someone doing a song, Shazam it. Don't copy their idea. The whole idea of the whole purpose of this is to be giving you ideas of how to be original. So don't copy someone's idea. Um, but let it inspire you in a different way. Um, yeah, so, and you can Shazam pretty much anything off the you know, TV. Okay, next tip is mix, mix things. Learn how to do, oh, pardon me, learn how to burp. Learn how to use audio mixing technology. It's not that hard to do. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are who will do it for you, um, but this it can add up. It can be costly. Uh, my dad taught me how to use SoundForge and then Audacity. I prefer SoundForge, but I currently use Audacity just because that's the one that I have. Um, apparently, GarageBand is good. Um, there's a lot of teachers out there that will help you with it. If you would like me to do a video on how to mix dance music for dance tracks on Audacity then yeah, chuck it in the comments because I'm very happy to do that. I'm that idea for a video. I'm going to put a spreadsheet on potential video. Um, the problem with being a creative person is that you don't get to control the creativity strikes. It comes at any point and um, like one of my favourite authors, John Marsden, who wrote the incredible book series Tomorrow When the War Began. He got the idea for that because one of the characters started talking to him while he was driving home. So he pulled over to the side of the road, grabbed the closest piece of paper, which was an envelope, like an old envelope for a bill or something, and started writing notes. Um, you kind of have to do that because those creative sparks are a little bit ephemeral. They come in and then they go, and then you're just like, oh, I had this bad idea that I can't remember, and it's just gone. Um, and when you are having to create such a huge scale and so much quantity, you, you've got to give yourself these more focused, logical ways of organising the creative brain. Um, yeah, so definitely potential routines, just any idea. Oh, that'd be a good idea. Even if you don't think it's a great idea, still put it down because a good idea or even an okay idea on the right dancer can be magic. It can go from, uh, that's happened to me so many times, where I thought, oh, that'd be an alright one. And then you put it on one particular dance and you just go, okay, this is a bloody good routine. And yeah, initially I was like, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so write it all down. Learn how to use Audacity. I was talking about mixing, that's right. Sorry, I got distracted by a car. Um, and you know, creative mm -hmm. Um, Learn how to mix. So that way if you, if you want to do something that is, or if a dancer in particular wants to do something a little bit cliche, 
done to death, whatever. You can do it in a different way. Mix it with another version of that song. Um, it's a really good one I did a few years back for a concert. I wanted, they were doing Mary Poppins at the school I was teaching at, and I wanted to use Feed the Birds because I love it. But it was for a senior class, and they were a little bit, oh, all right. Um, and, you know, we wanted something a bit different, but still Feed the Birds. Um, so I found, I just looked up on YouTube, do, you know, research is basically my next tip. Uh, do some research and find something different. So you can start out with an obvious song or a really popular current song. Do some research and find a different version of it. Um, sometimes just finding a, a, you know, an acoustic version of a popular song. Or take Never Enough. Find a version that, you know, I don't know, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters might have done an acoustic version of it somewhere. Who knows? Oh my God, Dave Grohl needs to do that song because he's, oh, just Dave Grohl. I don't know. With Feed the Birds, I found a French version, an Italian version, and a German version. And they were all brilliant. Um, and then I brought those versions into the class and the dancers had to pick which ones they thought would work. And oh, it was so much fun. And it was very clear what the song was, but it was just a little bit different. Um, there is a beautiful version of Silent Nights on my Enya. It is spectacular. Um, just that sort of thing, a common song in a different way. So many different versions of things out there. Don't just go for the Glee version. That was great at first, but now I've heard the Glee versions of songs so many times um, that it brings me to my next one. If someone does True Colours to the original Cindy Lauper version, you will be interesting and unique because apparently, people, you don't know any other version but the Glee version. I'm a really big Cindy Lauper. Please use the original. Go back to the going back can be a new thing. Okay, so go back a little bit, especially in lyrical. Lyrical are uh, everyone's using new or current music or music within the last year or two. Go back, go back to the 80s. You want a powerful song? You go to the 80s, baby. You go to the 80s. Or go with a different genre. You don't have to go with pop or, um, I don't know, what, what do you call Ed Sheeran sort of music or, I don't know. You don't have to go with a pop, current modern day pop ballad. Go to a rock band. See what the rock, oh, Road Trippin' by the Chili Peppers. Actually, no, don't, don't, if I was editing, I'd edit that out. That's my idea. I, I want to save that for like an amazing male band. So I just feel like that would be an incredible, <sighs> go back. Go back to find something new. Everything old is new again, and now I'm singing old songs into the gosh. Um, yeah, so they're my tips on how to choose music that's not going to be the same as their board else's. Because I really do believe you're doing a disservice to your dancers. And often with music, it's a bit of a, with dancing and creating dance pieces, it's a bit of a chicken and egg. It's like, okay, first the idea or the music. It's the music comes first and the dance and the dance. And then um, you know, sometimes you have to pick a particular type of music or whatever. You've got to fit the recital theme, something like that. But all of those more modern, popular songs, they work great for concerts. Okay, whatever the big song of the year has been, do it in your concert. Don't do it a comp, all right? Because odds are that the audience and the adjudicator have seen it a million times and haven't watched it. Okay, teachers, I love you. You're amazing. Keep doing you. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.